there, welcome to my Wood of Stuff. My name is Paul Mount. A quick video today. Uh, I just want to talk about Series 3 of Ricky Gervais's latest comedy, Afterlife, which dropped on Netflix a couple of days ago. Uh, it's currently January the 16th. It dropped on Friday the 14th. And I'm a massive fan of Ricky Gervais. Always have been since The Office. In fact, even before The Office, when he did things like the, I think it was the 11 o'clock show on um, Channel 4. And then he went on to do his short-lived chat show parody. Uh, meet Ricky Gervais, uh, which you can't find now. It used to be on uh, all four catch up, but it's not available now. I think possibly because one or two of the guests have since proven to be a little contentious. Uh, but no, I've loved everything he's done, really. Uh, his TV shows, his film career has been a bit iffy. I think he did went through that phase post office of trying to capitalize on that by doing these slightly bland Hollywood films, like The Invention of Lying. Uh, Ghost Town, which were decent enough, but they didn't really work as Ricky Gervais' vehicles. He sort of broke through in the early 2000s with The Office, which he co-created with his writing and podcast and broadcasting partner, Stephen Merchant. They, they've gone their separate ways over the last few years, uh, both forging out very interesting careers in different areas. Um, then he went on to do the brilliant extras. Then he did Derek for Channel 4. They did Life's Too Short, which was their sort of... Um, mock documentary series about Warwick Davis. Then they did Idiot Abroad with Carl Pilkins in Sky. So they've done a lot of stuff. Um, but Afterlife, Ricky Gervais's later series, it's possibly Ricky's finest work. It's not, in terms of humour, his funniest, although there is a comedy series, because I think there's more belly laughs per half hour in Extras and The Office. But this is his most um, sophisticated and thoughtful and heartbreaking piece, really. It's the third series as well, the last series. And if you're a fan of Ricky, you'll know that he doesn't tend to do third series. It's generally been two series and a special to wrap things up. Um, but this time he felt that there was more story to be told. Um, the story, basically, Ricky Gervais plays a um, character who's, who's um, Tony. His name's Tony, by the way. Uh, whose wife, Lisa, played by Kerry Godleyman who you remember from um, Derek. She was the care home supervisor in Derek. And I do like the way he has a little repertory company of performers who appear in different roles in different shows across his career. I think that's really nice. Um, and in this, she plays Lisa. He's his wife who's passed away from cancer. Uh, he's devastated. He's beyond depressed. He works for a, uh, a newspaper, a little middling local newspaper in a in a nice parochial little country village called Tanbury. Um, he works there, but he, his, work, his heart's not in it. His heart's not in anything. He's, he's riven with grief. He is grief. Um, and he's just like a dead man walking himself. Um, he's very bitter. He's very, very depressed about the fact that he's lost his soulmate, the love of his life. He's looking after the dog, and he spends most of his time at home watching videos that he took of, of Lisa in better times and even when she was ill in hospital. That's all that keeps him going, uh, the thought of the life he once had that was cruelly taken from him. Um, circling around his his in orbit, uh, a, a bunch of different characters, typical Ricky Gervais sort of comedy characters, who are this time painted in, in warmer strokes than perhaps usual. Um, you've got, again, regulars uh, such as Diane Morgan, the brilliant Diane Morgan, who first came to fame as... Uh, Philomena Kunk in her Charlie Brooker's show. She's now gone on to the brilliant Mandy, Motherland. She pops up in all, all over the place. She's a superb, superb actress and comedy performer. Check out Mandy on BBC Two, by the way. It's absolutely brilliant. Short, surreal, quarter of an hour sitcom. She plays Kath. She's a lost soul as well. She works in the newspaper and she's lonely. She can't find a partner. She believes in astrology, all the sort of stuff that Ricky... Ricky's character, and Ricky himself has no time for at all. Um, then you've got um, Tom Basden, who you will remember from the David Brent film Life on the Road. He plays Tony's brother-in-law, uh, who runs the, who's the, the owner or the, the uh, editor of the newspaper. Tony Way plays one of his colleagues. Um, it's just a nice little bunch of supporting characters. There's a character called Brian, played by David Earle, who is very much playing the same sort of grotesque, sleazy character that he played in Derek. It's a character I 
couldn't cope with in Derrick because he was in an environment that that sort of person would get a million miles close to. You know, this sleazy, boorish, drunken, sexual predator who you wouldn't be in a care home. Here he plays this chap called Brian who lives in a house that's full of clutter. Again, he's got no friends. And that's sort of a theme of the series, outsiders, loners, trying to find their place in the world. And all these characters are trying to find their place in the world as, as Tony has lost his. Um, it's the third series that's just dropped. And this is one of those shows. I did it last you know, the year before the second series arrived. I just blitzed it in one go. It's that sort of show. It's half hour episodes. I think the last episode is 35 minutes long. And after the second series, because it's so relentlessly bleak in that Tony is so downbeat. And the first series, it was described as almost like a superhero thing. And that his superpower was he didn't care anymore. He didn't care about offending people. He didn't care what people thought about him. Because for him, there was no reason for him to be alive without Lisa. That was his superpower. And as the first two series wore on, it wasn't exactly the, the, that he thawed. It's that he tried to come to terms with this new life that he didn't want that's been foisted upon him by the tragedy of Lisa's passing. And it's him trying to connect with people, people trying to connect with him, people trying to help him. You had extreme characters like uh, Rosine Conner, Conner, Connerhy, rather, who played a well-meaning prostitute that he met in the first series who just came and sort of cleaned his house and became a friend. Joe Wilkinson, the sort of... Um, wide-eyed sort of uh, local postman um, and especially Ashley Jensen who appeared in extras she plays the one of the carers in the care home where his father played by David Bradley is resident he's got dementia and he goes in to visit him and he has a sort of a connection with with Ashley Jensen's character Maggie or not Maggie she was Maggie in extras but he can't take it to the next level because he, he just can't foresee having a relationship with anybody else apart from Lisa. This third series then has dropped and after series two you think, well, wow, where does where does Tony go now? How do you redeem him? How do you give him some sort of hope? And I think this series does that almost reluctantly and I think Ricky's been very bold in not doing what seemed like the obvious thing to do. They haven't, you know, spoilers if you haven't seen it yet. He doesn't end up with Astrid Jensen's character. They both come to an understanding that it's not going to happen. Um, she moves on. Uh, he sort of come to term, comes to terms with things. But it's slightly tragic because we know that he's going to stay on his own because it's what he wants. If he can't have Lisa, he doesn't want anybody else. Um, and that is sad. Um and it, the series ends very poignantly, very sadly, but also quite sweetly because you get redemption and you get closure for all the other characters, all the other characters who in their own way have been lonely and outsiders and even the more extreme ones get some sort of uh, shot of happiness. It is bleak. There's no doubt about it. There are some scenes. I mean, he spends a lot of time sitting at a bench in the graveyard looking at his wife's uh Memorial Stone, sitting with Penelope Wilton, whose own husband Stan died a few years earlier, and she sort of spurs him on and tries to make him think that there is something worth living for. And this scenes are very sweet, but it's very bleak in that he is just so nihilistic. There's no sense of hope really there, and that's but that's nicely counterpointed by the humour, which is extreme in places incredibly slapstick in other places very very funny when it needs to be sometimes it's a bit sort of ouch did that happen did they say that did they do that did he but Ricky Gervais as you know from things like the Golden Globes that he's hosted doesn't believe in boundaries doesn't believe in that there are things you can't you know make fun of and he continues to do that but in his own very unique sort of way uh, some may find it offensive the language is fruity to say the least um and sometimes it does make you wince because it is so sort of in your face, particularly David Earl's character, who is just a grotesque. But you can't help liking him in a, in a way. And what this series, I think, has done a bit more perhaps than the other two series, he spent time, more time with the other characters. For example, Kath, Diane Morgan's character, she goes out on a series of rather tragic dates with potential boyfriends. Um, and that's quite amusing. So the supporting characters all get their own individual threads. So it's not all about Tony all the time. There are several quite long sequences where he's not there. Um, 
it's a very satisfying third series. It's very difficult when you've got a show that's that good and has had that sort of quality to keep up that quality and not to disappoint when it comes to the end. But I think this ends in the right place. It ends in the right way. It ends, as some series do, in the only way it really can. Uh, because doing anything else would probably betray the core idea of the series and what he's trying to say. You know, he's trying to say that sometimes grief is so overwhelming that you can't get over it. And that's what ultimately happens to Tony. Because it's what would happen to Tony. I think if, you know, if he danced off into the sunset with Ashley Jensen's character to start a new life, it would betray everything that he had, everything that he cared about and everything that he grieved for. And I think Ricky Gervais is intelligent enough and clever enough not to betray his creations in that way. It's it's a great series. I mean, it is hard work. It, it's not it's not easy viewing. If you've suffered from grief, and most, most people have in one way or another, it'll touch you in certain ways. And his his plight is so devastating and his heart is so dark. It, it can be difficult, but it, it is then leavened by some laugh-out-loud humour from the other characters who are all a bit larger than life. Tony is the sort of the almost like an every man in the middle and all these extremes revolve around them. But there's some amusing stuff. Um, his brother-in-law challenges him to various sports uh, duels to prove that he's fitter than him. Um, and as I say, Kath's string of dates. Um, it's just very funny stuff, but you've got to be prepared for the darkness because when it's dark, it's very dark. I loved it. I love, you know, Ricky Gervais can really do no wrong for me. I've loved his stand-up shows, which I've seen on DVD. Um, I think he's a genius because he tells it like it is. If he if he wants to tell a certain story, he's going to tell it. And if people are offended, well, that's their problem. That's Afterlife Series 3. It's on Netflix now, uh, along with the first two series. 18 beautiful, beautifully crafted episodes of superb television. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Uh, let me know what you think of Afterlife if you watched it. As I say, do apologise. There have been a couple of spoilers. I put in the... Uh, Thumbnail description, spoilers, in case you haven't seen it, because as I say, I blitzed it in at one go, because I could not. Some of you may be watching it an episode a week, or a bit short, a bit slower than that, so uh, yeah, you might want to come back to this video when you've seen the whole lot. Anyway, uh, that's me done for now. Uh, like I say, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the channel generally, Afterlife in particular, and I'll see you soon. But until I do, you know what they say. You've got to keep taking the stuff. <laughs>